Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about absolute value equations. Okay, um, so there's two definitions of absolute value that I want to uh, recall for you today. So um, this is just a picture that I got off the internet here because I thought it was a good description of uh, what absolute value is. Oftentimes we say that the absolute value is the distance that a number is away from zero. Okay. And since distance is um, always measured in positive units, absolute value always ends up being positive. So recall that we use the square brackets to denote um, the taking of an absolute value. So these square brackets actually just refer to um, an action that's being taken. So the absolute value of negative 7 is equal to 7 because negative 7, as you can see up here, is 7 units away from 0. Whereas the absolute value of 4 is 4 because 4 is 4 units away from 0. Now, um, as you can see, what ends up happening is that if you take the absolute value of a negative number, it ends up being positive. And if you take the absolute value of a positive number, it doesn't change. Okay. Um, a second definition of absolute value, which is not used as much, but it's the reason why we take the absolute value oftentimes, is that if we want the magnitude of a number, regardless of the sign, we'll take an absolute value. So let's say that, um, and you'll see this often in like Algebra 2, if you have, um, if you're, if you're performing an operation and you have to, like, uh, let's say you ha have an operation that is under a square root sign and you want it to be a real number and not an imaginary number. Um, let's say that you have two numbers that you are subtracting and you don't know if A is going to be greater than B or B is going to be greater than A. So what you do is you put absolute value brackets around it so that the result, regardless of whether A is greater than B, which would result in the difference being positive, or B is greater than A, which would result in the difference being negative. Regardless of whether or not, um, whether either of these is the case, the result is always positive. So um, a lot of times, like, programmers will use absolute value to ensure that um, what they get out of a, an operation ends up being positive, um, just to make sure that when they run it through some other thing like a square root or a root, um, it'll end up being a real number and not an imaginary number. Okay, so it's a way to take the magnitude of the number um, regardless of the sign. So let's say the absolute value of seven of negative seven is seven. So um, we can think of the magnitude of negative seven being just seven. Okay, so it's another way that we can use it. Now, when we have equations involving absolute value, something strange can happen. So um, I want you to recall what we just did when we had the absolute value of negative seven. Well, the absolute value of negative 7 was 7, but also remember that the absolute value of 7 itself is 7. So when I'm looking backwards and I'm saying, okay, if, an, if I take the absolute value of a number and it's equal to 7, what could, have, what could x have been? Well, in, you can see in this situation that it could have either been negative 7 or 7, right? Both of them result in an absolute value of 7, right? So both of these result in an absolute value of 7. So how are you supposed to know which one is which? Well, the idea of the absolute value of equations is it actually generates two um, solutions here. So what you're going to do is think about this. If, if you're taking the absolute value of a number and you get 5, well, that number could have either been 5 or negative 5. So to get rid of the absolute value symbol, we're actually going to generate two equations here. Okay. So split your paper uh, into two, um, and to get rid of absolute value, I want you to make two equations. I want you to make an equation where whatever's on the inside of the absolute value is equal to the positive result of the right side, and whatever's inside the absolute value is equal to the negative. Now, this is a very simple equation where we don't end up having to solve anything after it's already solved. So e either x is equal to 5 or it's equal to negative 5. Okay, so the, if the absolute value of x is equal to 5, then x can either be 5 or negative 5. So this is the first time we've encountered where we generate two solutions to an equation. Now, I want you to write these solutions using the curly brackets of um, the uh, set notation. So let me see if I can do this a little bit better. Um, they have this little um, point right here that shows up. So this is a curly bracket. I want you to write 5, comma, negative 5. Those are the solutions, OK? Um, so for the second one, again, we're going to divide the paper into two. And we're going to take the entire expression right here on the inside 
I actually should have used uh, yellow here to keep a system for my highlights. Um, so take this and set it equal to 5 and negative 5. So we're going to set x plus 3 equal to 5 and also x plus 3 equal to negative 5. Okay, so this splits into two parts, right? Okay, um, so the first thing I'm, so what I'm going to do right now is just solve this like a reg regular equations because I've just made them into regular equations, right? So I subtract 3 from both sides. I say that x is equal to 2 or it's equal to negative 8. So let me use the curly brackets and actually I should have written the smallest one to the left here. Like up here I should have written negative 5 and 5 here. It doesn't entirely matter, but it's just a tradition to do that with set notation. Okay, um, so let's just look at, at what happened here. Well, if x were negative 8, negative 8 minus 3 would have gotten, or negative 8 plus 3 would have gotten you negative 5. And then the absolute value of negative 5 would have been 5. So negative 8 is a solution here. And if x were 2, 2 plus 3 is 5. And if I took the absolute value of this, I would indeed get 5. So for both of these, if I put the answers, the solutions back in, they both, um, I've just checked my answers by um, making sure that they were solutions, okay? Let's go on to one that's a little different. Now this one is different because um, on the outside of the absolute value here, there was nothing on the, this side of the equation that was outside the absolute value. Here, there's an expression on the inside of the absolute value and something on the outside of the absolute value. So this whole thing right here um, is on the outside of the absolute value. Let's see. So this entire thing right here is on the outside of the absolute value, this plus 3. Now your first step is actually going to get, you want to get everything, you want to get the expression inside the absolute value on one side and everything else on the other side. So that's your first step in this equation. We didn't have to do it before because we had nothing on the outside. So we have uh, the absolute value of 2x minus 1 is equal to 17. Okay. Now, since you have just the absolute value on the left-hand side and something else on the right-hand side, a constant on the right-hand side, this is where you're going to split your paper into two parts. And you're going to make two equations. Set 2x minus 1 equal to 17. And then set 2x minus 1 equal to negative 17 here. And then to um, solve the rest of the, now, see now you just have regular equations. So now you can just solve the equations like you know how to do. So 2x is equal to 18 divided by 2. We'd have x is equal to 9. Okay, we'll add 1 to both sides here. We have 2x is equal to uh, negative 16 here divided by 2. And we'd have x is equal to negative 8. So our solution set is negative 8 comma 9 here. Now if we think about that, if we put negative 8 into this expression, let's say 2 times negative 8 minus 1, absolute value, plus 3, that should be equal to 20. So let's run it through. 2 times negative 8 is negative 16, minus 1 is negative 17. The absolute value of negative 17 is positive 17. Positive 17 plus 3 is 20. So that works. If we put 9 in here instead, we have the absolute value of 2 times 9 minus 1 uh, plus 3 is equal to 20. Let's just check it. That's 18 minus uh, 1 is 17. The absolute value of 17 is positive 17 plus 3 is equal to 20. So both of them check out. Okay, let's try one more um, absolute value equation here. Now this one happens to have a coefficient on the outside and um, an addition on the outside as well. So the first step, remember, is to get the expression with the absolute value by itself. So let me just highlight that for a minute here. Um, this is the expression with the absolute value, right? So I want to get this expression by itself. So what I need to get rid of is this 3 and this plus 5, right? 3 is attached with multiplication, and the plus 5 is attached, of course, with addition. So remember, I'm going to use SADMEP to solve equations, so I'm going to get rid of the, any addition and subtraction first. So let's subtract 5 first, and I have 3 times the absolute value of x minus 4 is equal to 36. Now I'm going to take this entire expression and divide it by 3. Okay, and so that's going to cancel the 3 out from the other side, and what I'm left with is the absolute value of x minus 4 is equal to 12. Okay. 
Now, since I have the expression with the absolute value by itself, this is where I split it into two equations. I'm gonna take x minus four and set it equal to 12. And I'm gonna take x minus four and set it equal to negative 12. Okay, here I'm gonna add four to both sides. So I have x is equal to 16. And I'm gonna add four to both sides and have x is equal to negative eight. So my solution set is negative eight comma 16. And if you put that back into the equation, you will see that it works, right? So negative 16 minus, negative eight minus four is negative 12. Absolute value of negative 12 is 12, times three is 36, plus five is 41. Um, likewise, 16 minus four gets you 12, so the absolute value is 12, of 12 is 12. And again, it's gonna be multiplied by three and at, uh, five will be added to it to get 41. So um, both, of these, uh, both of these numbers are solutions to the equation. All right, so uh, remember the first step is to get the expression with the absolute value um, by itself, and then to um, split your paper into two parts, two different equations, and solve each equation um, the way that you've been solving equations. But remember, to, it generates two solutions, and you are going to write those solutions uh, using the curly brackets. Okay?